Good morning. You're starting seven minutes late. You do? Um, <clears throat> today we are going to continue our discussion on templates, um, going through uh, uh, what we need to know to be able to um, write effective uh, function templates to actually work for what we want to do. Um, then after that, if we have time, uh, we may start to kickstart the, the, the class template that um, I promised that we are going to do, okay? So uh, one thing I want to let you, uh, like, um, ask you to do is to um, please um, go through the notes for the next week today, okay, and see what you want me to talk about that day. And tell, talk about it and let me know in advance, okay? So I can be prepared for parts that you want me to review or anything. Uh, I'll try to, if we start the class templates today, I'll try to finish it that day. But again, that's off topic for uh, final or anything. I may give you some bonus thing to do to get you to, to let you gain, to give you some uh, uh, kind of, give you some bribes to actually do that <laughs> for the next semester. So I may give you something to do, some assignment or workshop on class templates that is not official, and give you some chance to do something to gain some extra marks as bonus. Because it's not within the uh, topics that we are covering for OP244, but it's very essential for you to know for OP345. So we talked about uh, we talked about overloading. We started everything with overloading and explained that if we have common knowledge, common logic between uh, specific type of uh, if we have common logic on different overloads of a function, a better way of doing of implementing that is through templates. So instead of keep writing the same logic over and over and change the types, what we could do is to actually uh, um, uh, create a template for only one version, one uh, logic, and then ask the compiler to do that for us. So when we created four logics in this example that we have done last time, we said, because the logics are identical, instead of doing something like that, I create a template and I say, okay, uh, the, the display sum of mine is actually working as such, which is uh, adding this one to that one and doing the sum and returning everything else, so on and so forth. So every time I call this, attempt to call this function template, uh, if I, create a new version of a call, the compiler at compile time detects that and generates the function for me. So not only it's beneficial to have a template instead of a function overload with respect to less coding, uh, it is better because your executable shrinks. When you create a, an overload, you are essentially telling the compiler, I have this function, translate it to the code and put it in the executable in case I call it. So an executable will contain all the code that you have. But when you create a template, you're essentially telling only generate the function for me if needed. Therefore, you are not going to have any code if the function is never called in your code. You can comfortably add that to your source code, to your libraries with clear mind that including templates to your library will not generate extra code in your executable unless you actually use it. Where in old-fashioned C and C++, anything we included, we essentially added to our executable. Every single function that you include, it actually gets added into your executable, where templates don't. Templates are on-demand type of a thing. Okay? Are we good down to this point? Okay. 
Well, sometimes when you create something like this, so we, we know this all works, so I'm going to take those things off. We know all these works for different container mark and everything because they all have the exact same requirements for the function, which is essentially they are safe to pass by value. They uh, uh, implement the plus binary plus operator. They have copy construction. They can get printed on C out and so on and so forth. So we can apply it to all those things. <clears throat> well, what if I have something like this? So I'm going to leave the integer one over there. which is that one. So that's the integer one that we have, right? What if I have something like this? I'm trying to come up with some good example on that one. <laughs> Give me a second. What if I want to have something like uh, S1, and I'm going to set S1 to, say, let's put over here 20, something like that. Uh, let's see. And What if I want to have something like this? And have the exact same thing that I had for the other one. Obviously, obviously, res over here in this case must be dynamic. I cannot return if like, this is a character pointer. The type over here is a character pointer, obviously, right? From what I have over here, the type is character pointer. So let's translate that. What's going to happen? Character pointer F, character pointer S, it comes over here. Res becomes, that's res, right? So, so essentially, we're going to have a character pointer sum which is going to be the, the sum of f that is the pointer left and f that is the pointer s, like those two. So they are all defined, but will it do what I want it to do? <laughs> this is goes complete, it's gonna go completely numb nuts because it's not gonna do anything. When you think about it, just to, to, to analyze and see what did I do in here, actually, I think I have something that, that may help. So, essentially, what I have over here will be something like this. So, this is my S1. Does it draw? Am I, am I in draw? Yep. Uh, let's go back. Okay, just a second. My pen doesn't work. <laughs> There you go. Good. That's better. Okay. So uh, this is my this is my S1. Okay. This is S1. Sorry for lack of uh, artistic skills. Okay. So this is S1. That is so. And this is my memory. Okay. This is S1 pointing over here. And it's pointing to a piece of memory, right? And this is S2 pointing to another piece of memory. Right? And this is result, res. I don't know why I started with S, but res. That's pointing nowhere, right? S1 and S2 are two addresses. So one says, for example, address 10. So say this one is address 
10, and this one is adverse 20. Okay, let's say it's like that. Okay? So with display sum, what happens over here is that address 10 plus address 20 becomes address 30. So uh, this is going to point to 30, which has nothing to do with anything. It, we don't know even what's in there. So it will not give you a compilation error, but what you get is nonsense. It's not the concatenation of the two things because you have it over there. So this logic cannot apply to this. It's not going to work out. So what can we do? First thing we can do is to clean that screen. So, <laughs> Oops. okay. All right. So <clears throat> when the, when, I have to explain this again. So when the logic that you have that actually uh, applies to your function call is absolutely different with what your template needs to do, you create the new logic and overload it, and overload is always preferred to your template. So the compiler in line, compiler's call, compiler's call in line 68 will not generate a new version of the template, but pick up the overload instead, and life is beautiful. So this will work, and now the display sum is working for both of them. Okay, so that's, That's when you overload over templates. It's preferred. What are the disadvantages of this? The disadvantage is that, again, you are creating a code that's going to get compiled. What if I really want this thing to be a template? And if I don't call it, no code gets generated. How can I create a template that has the same signature of another template where the, by, by the way, the different logic. That's called function, special, function template specialization. So you specialize your template, you, you make this a template, and you specialize it to be a new one. So instead of doing this, you can actually do this. So I can actually write over here, template, but you don't mention what the type name is. You say, hey, this is a template. I'm not going to tell you in here what the generalized type is. But instead, but you, what, what you will do is writing over here, this is the one that is for character pointers. So now your display sum is a template too for this version. Because you are saying if display sum, so now you have an overload for your template. Now you are saying if it's a generalized anything other than character pointer, do that. If the display sum is a character pointer, do this. Okay? And remember, how the compiler generates the, the display sum is uh, essentially by seeing what type of uh, arguments is being called. Hello. Okay? So, now, executing this, we'll actually call this one instead. And I have a template. If I don't actually call the character pointer one, Nothing will get generated for me. Another thing I have to mention, how to force creation of a specific type of template against the type that explains why the signature exists. I'm going to show you how to force the compiler to create a specific type of function template disregarding what the actual function call is. In here, I'm doing integer a and b, right? What if I want the outcome to be actually a double? 
and I want to receive these two integers. What if I have in here C as a double? And what I need over here is the compiler to generate a double version of the template. Well, because double accepts integers too, it uses the coercion, if you recall what coercion is, so and casts the, the two integers to a double and passes that one. How can I do that? You can actually tell the compiler, forget about what is in here. I want you to create the double version of it. So you can force the compiler to generate the double version of this place up. So you can specifically tell to the compiler, don't do it automatically. I want that one to get created. And that's how you can you actually create the function template. You look like a question mark to me. Everything's good? Yes. So you are saying, don't look at what I have over here. Generate the double version of the display sum. So first of all, this is not going to get created because it's character pointer. It has nothing to do with this, right? So it generates, so it comes over here, replaces the type with double, generates a double one. Now the double one is created. This wants to get called. Two integers will be casted to double, and what's returned is a double. We good? Are we okay? All right. And for the other one, the display sum that I have over here that is supposed to do some weird dynamic thingy over here and, and do whatever is needed, uh, uh, I create a specialized one. Okay? Yes. Operator equal for the for this one? Yeah. No, not at all. This one has its own logic. That's the thing. So for this one, you have another one. You've got to have another explanation. And then you write, this is a specialized version of the thing. So you will mention exactly what is this written for. This is an exception to the normal thing that you had up there. Yes, madam. For the This one. No, no, it won't. Yeah. What is the difference between overloading and the template? The difference is that, the difference is that, if, I, if you do not run this, so say this is in your library. You have the template in your library. And you have your own template library, my template library. And these two uh, function templates are there. If you call the double one, Compiler will generate the double. This one will not get generated, correct? Because it's a template. In the other version that you had, the overload, not the specialization, no matter what you do, because it's a function, regular function, the code will get generated. It will exist in your executable. The difference between a template and an overload is that overloads always in your executable. It gets compiled. It gets translated. But templates only get translated and generated if they are called. That's the only difference. Otherwise, sure, do, a, do a, an overload. Yes? Of course. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful way of saying it. Let me explain that again. <laughs> so if you do overload, it happens at runtime. If you do template, it happens at compile time. So when you do overload, it happens at runtime, the function selection. When you do template, first it gets generated at compile time, then it will be selected at runtime. <laughs> OK? <laughs> All right? That's, I know. It's, it's, uh, yeah. We good? That's it. That's all about function templates. That's it. That's as uh, good as it gets. And that's so. Is there anything else that I need to mention in here? And I have no idea why I created. And I think it was stopped in the recording when I created an unrelated function allocopy thingy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so on recording, probably will not gonna have that one. Thankfully. But anyways, uh, are we good? Question.
Yeah, but you have to have the signature for it. Yeah. So you have to say what is it and then use that wherever you want. This may not even return a character point. Could have been a void if you wanted to. Doesn't matter. You are saying this is my special generation of that thing. You OK? All right. OK. So that's function specialization. I do not know. Your job is to go look at the notes to see if this is covered or not. <laughs> OK, the function specialization. So this one is going to be D. Function template. And now, let the games begin. So I'm creating a double array. Why? Because I hate the way arrays work in C language that I'm, that I'm using in a in C++ too, right? When you create an array, the array that you have, it has uh, no idea what its size is. You can exceed the, the index and it's going to ruin everything. It's a very dumb thing. It's very low level, the arrays in C. I don't want that. I want to have a smart array. If I exceed the size, I want it to resize itself or say, make it safe so it doesn't go to some other thing's memory, right? So I want to do that. That's why I'm going to create my own. So this is for a double array. So if I want to ever use a double array, I'm going to use this one instead. You good what we are doing here? All right? So I want to create a replacement for the double arrays that I always use, and I want to create this one. Well, before doing that, I have to show you something important. Before I do this, I'm going to come back in this PRG thingy and just remove everything. Let's say I want to create a record record, not a class. I want to create a record for somebody's possessions, whatever that may be. OK? So if I do that, I need to have the person's name, and I, want to, I need to have what the person possess. That could be hat, cell phone, headphones, banana with pear and sandwich, on a everything bagel, and whatever, right? Any position that I have. So how do I do that? So the record, if I want to create, first of all, it's a record, so I'm going to make, make it a struct, OK? I'm not going to go with a class because I want to create a record. I wouldn't be smart. It's just a record, OK? So in here, I'm going to write it as <laughs> I just, uh, I always ruined my own uh, reputation in, in, in English knowledge. So anyways, I, I want to have a position, right? So the position that I have, it belongs to someone. So I'll put over your character name. That's the, 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 the name of the person. Let's say uh, 128 characters. And then I want to have some, but I don't know what type of position I want the person to have. So it's an unknown thing for future what it's going to be. So I'm just going to make it a generalized type. So I'm going to write over here type. And in here, I'm going to write uh, position. <laughs> OK, so that's that. So that's craves for template, right? 
to make it anything. So if I do that, let me take all these things down. I have to write over here template like I did for functions, and I'm going to say type name type. So now I'm good. So now I have a record that can hold anyone's possession for whatever it is. So if I want that position to be my laptop, I want to create a structured position of laptops, right? If I want to see, uh, I don't know. So I'm going to do it for now with, because I don't have a laptop class over here to create that, but anything I could, uh, what? Um, why can't I actually? It may, um, so yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write over here class. I'm actually creating a laptop. OK, laptop. And in here, I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, character model, whatever. And public uh, laptop constant character point to model. OK? Very simple thing. I'm, I, I don't want to put, I'm not going to put anything in here. And it's going to have many other things. OK? Whatever, right? So now if I want to see, like, like possession, see what type of a laptop I want, how do I create that? I'm going to say over here, possession, how? Structures and classes don't have signatures for the compiler to find out what is the signature of the class. So if I say over here, possession, my laptop, I cannot because it, how does it know, <laughs> right? Or if I say over here, possession, my number. Now, this is an integer. How does it know this is a laptop, this is an integer? It doesn't know, right? So for classes, you are forced to tell to the compiler what the signature is as you did with a function. You could manually ask the, the, the compiler which version to create. Remember, we put the, th the signature of the template after the function name. We can do the exact same thing. So in here, as I, I can say, this position is for laptop, and this position is with uh, an integer. So now, this is, why is it doing that? I have no idea. That's, I don't know, we'll find out. I don't know. It should, why is it doing that? Default construction was, oh, shoot. Uh, uh, Aces, okay, <laughs> whatever. Okay, so now it's better. So see, when it actually did that, it told me that, hey, what you're creating is wrong because that needs a default constructor in here to actually exist, right? So now it's fixed. So now I have a laptop and I have, so do we understand how classes are created? Structure, that's, structure is a class, right? But, but it's the simplest way to explain how to specifically create a class template. But we're gonna go into the detail after I created the double array. So we're okay with this? Are we okay with this? Okay, so let's save this. That's in your, is your template uh, of workshop up now? Is that workshop nine template? It's not template. So, so that's this you will see in your template workshop because we, this is as far as we go with classes. Okay, well, but I'll go through it. Is that a question or just a scratching? <laughs> okay, so all right. So, now I'm going to actually go in here. So I don't know if I'm going to actually, re so my, what I'm going to do over here is first create a double array, okay? After I'm done with creating a dynamic double array for myself that is smart and does all the good stuff that I want, then I take the doubleness out and make it a template. So it can be an array of anything. You follow what I want to do? So first I'm going to create 
Because that's usually when you're a rookie, that's how you do it. You create something with the general type. When it satisfies you, then change, you change that general type to a template, and then you cover all your bases. Okay? But after you get experience in templates and stuff, you can start with a template off the bat. I'm not doing that now. One thing that I did not talk about template that I have to tell you again. Before doing this, I keep, I keep say, telling you stuff. The heck? That's, oh yeah. Um, say I want to put these things in my utils.h. Okay. Say I want to instead of this this I want to because I have utils included over here, right? Say I want to put this thing in my utils.h. So I'm going to remove this from here. And I'm going to put it in utils. So how do we put it in utils? The way we learned is to put the functions in here and put the body of the function here, right? So the and it's not in a class. It's just the helper function. And then I'll come over here uh, in, the, in the utils and I remove and I make it a prototype, correct? Are we okay with this? That's how we do it. And when you look at this, when you look at, I'm going to save this, and when you look at this, you're not even getting an error. Everything seems to be fine. Okay? But again, put yourself in the compiler's shoe now. You know that when compiler runs, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the semester, each file that it's getting compiled is being compiled separately without knowledge of other files. And each one of them generates a code. And when everything ends, you have Linker putting all those objects together and create the executable, right? OK. So when this main is being compiled right now, because what I have over here is this main that I have that is being compiled. So this gets compiled, whatever the main is, the prj.cpp. And it has utils.h included in it with all the function calls. So when compiler wants to create the template, what does it have in its hand to create the source code out of it? It comes into utils.h, and all it has is the prototype, which is very fine. So it sees this is your template. It generates the prototype for you. So you will not get a compiler, and it compiles. And then it was to compile the utils in here. When it utils compiles the utils, do you have the templates in here? Yes. Are the templates called in utils? No. No code will get generated for it. Therefore, the linker is going to fail. Linker is going to say, hey, you have the prototypes. You don't have the body. How do I do it? That's why. Unlike other modules where you have the body of the functions, unlike other modules that you have the body of the functions in a CPP file and the prototypes in a header file, templates entirely exist in a header file. Module of a header file of a template is only a header file. There is no CPP file. Okay? So when you are doing this, you cannot do this. You ha if you want this to be in utils, you have to do it like that. And do it comfortably. Don't worry that you have lots of code in your header file. Because the function will only get generated if it's called. So you have no problem with that. So that's the correct version of modularizing a template, moving all the code for the template inside a header file. Why do I say this? When I create my double array, I have a .h and a .cpp, like I do all the time, right? But when you are finished and you want to convert it to a template, you have to move everything into array.h and delete the cpp file, because you cannot have two separate things. Be good? All right? Be OK, right? Hopefully. I'm not definitely not going to do this because that's okay. So that's out.
and this one I'm going to put it exactly how it was and yeah, save it go out So my double array, what do I do with it? Simple. <clears throat> um, I'm going to say, OK, I have double. That's my array, right? Oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> That's how we have an array. An array is essentially a pointer pointing to a piece of memory, right? That's my array. Unlike a regular array, I'm just going to give it some information that a normal array doesn't have. So immediately, right off the bat over here, I'm going to say size t, size, done. Problem solved. So now my array actually knows what it is size. And I'm going to keep track of it, and life is beautiful. I can actually see what I have. So, and obviously, I'm going to make sure that it's null when it's created. And I'm going to... Simply say size t uh, size const, okay? And let me just bring the other one up too and do it at the same time. This is a beautiful review for all the good stuff we have done in the, in the, in dynamic memory allocation department and classes with resources, <laughs> okay? So that's what I do. I'm going to create it over there. So in here, I'm going to say uh, create it in double array. So it comes right over here. And in here, I'm going to say return um, size. So there you go. So now my uh, array knows what is its size. Done. So the very first thing is finished, OK? How to implement the size thing to work every time. We're, we're going to deal with that later. So uh, I'm going to have a, a constructor created for it. So it's double array. Uh, how do I create the constructor? So uh, we can create a default constructor for it first, or we can actually say what is its size. So we can have the size and set it to whatever we want, right? So in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, size t size, right? And when I don't, when you don't mention what is the size of an array, you just create an array. First of all, you can choose to make that possible. We can say, OK, um, if you create an array, you must give me the size. It's your choice. You, either you can default it, you do it that way. Which one you think is better? You think when you create an array, you need the size? You think we need the size? No default constructors? Everybody's OK with it? You can change the, we can change the design. So I'm not going to put any default constructor in, yeah, any, uh, anything other than. So it, they have to provide me the size. You cannot create an array without the size. Although it's very easy to, to fix that whenever we want. Just, you just put the default value for it and it's done. OK, so to create that, what I'm going to say, first of all, you cannot create anything with size of 0, right? So if I'm going to immediately say if, if uh, size is equal to 0, I'm going to say size is 1. So it means if somebody gives me a size 0, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to make it 1. You know? <laughs> we don't have a size zero in here. I'm not going to let them do that. And then after that, I'm going to do whatever is needed. So what I'll do in here would be, um, I'm going to say m data is equal to new uh, double right a size. And I'm going to set the size m size to that size. Right? Correct? We're good. All right. We can actually. Um, Set everything right to zero right off the bat, too. OK? So there you go. So that's my array. I created the array. Fine. And definitely, right after this, I need a destructor, right? So I'm going to create the destructor, double array destructor. And in the destructor, I'm going to say delete uh, mdata. And the way I designed it, it's impossible not to have anything. So 
able to read something, whatever it is, at least one, right? So is this good down to this point? Any problem with this, with this code? Thank you. 1% for, for final. Okay? So, so, so remember, virtual. Okay? But we said, you remember, from this moment till the yada yada, I have to make it virtual. Always look for it. So it has to get virtual. Okay, so that's that. So now I have the array. Uh, now uh, I want to access its elements one by one. So how do I do that? Uh, first, I'm going to do it easy way, and then I'm going to expand it to whatever I want. So if I want to access its arrays, its its values, it, if in its uh, uh, what you might call it, the, uh, the elements of the array, what do I need to do? I need to have a double reference because I want to be able to set it to right. And in here is going to be operator, and in here I'm going to have size t index right. So that's going to be the, the operator that I'm creating. And for that one, I'm going to say, what do I say in here? So I have, I'm creating the operator. So how do I make it safe? Uh, I'm going to say uh, return, OK, uh, m data. And in here, I'm going to say index, right? So that's index. So how to guarantee that index is less than size at all times? How do I do that? Mod m size. Done. Nobody can get out of the thing anymore. So if let's say size is 3. If it's 0 mod 3, it's 0. 1 mod 3 is 1. 2 mod 3 is 2. 3 mod 3, 0 again. Done. So. Nobody can go off this thing anymore, okay? And to make sure that it both in, it works in both ways, because sometimes they, if you want to print an array, you, by definition, we pass a constant version of the array out, right? If that's the case, then this function cannot get called because it's not constant. And I cannot make it a constant because I want them to be able to set it to something. So in my main, in here, in my main, Oh, this is, did I put the uh, CD? I'm going to say simple class templates. <clears throat> so in my main, we're going to go very early, don't worry. Um, I see people are going, OK. So uh, include double array. OK, so in here, I'm going to say uh, double array uh, D, and I'm going to put over here, say, 5, right? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> sorry about that. It's a constructor. 5, right? So it creates an array of 5 integers. Now I can actually say, for example, uh, uh, size ti. I can say for i set to 0, i less than d dot size. I don't need to worry about what is the size. The size is all, always known. And another boo oh, actually, it's good. And then I can say what? I can say um, i plus plus and say I'm going to do something like uh, d i is set to uh, i uh, plus 10. And in here, I'm going to say. Just putting, giving it some value, people. It's just very simple. Uh, multiply by 1.1, something, OK? So, so I'll go through. Now I'm going through this, and it's going to be, because it's returning a reference, I can put it at left side and actually set the elements, because it's set returning a reference of the element out. Are we good with this? And then I can print this easily. Now I can come over here, and I'm going to say over here, uh, <clears throat> void PRN array. And in here, I'm going to say double array uh, reference the const, uh, const, OK? <clears throat> OK, now I can do the exact same thing done over here. Instead, I can actually say, uh, for example, if i is set to 0, I'm going to say, 
not equal to zero. So if I, I'm going to say C out, comma, right? I think that's how we did comma separated values, right? And in here, I, we need using namespace std. And, and then in here, I can say uh, C out di. So it prints the elements. But the problem over here would be that, hey, this is, this is not constant. D is not constant. You cannot print it that way. So we have problem in here, right? For that, remember that constantness is always part of the signature of a, of a function. You can always overload it. So what I can do is this. <clears throat> you can do that. There's nothing to prevent you to do that. So in here, I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to actually do the exact same code in here. But the difference is that the reference that is being sent out is now constant. <laughs> Right? So this is read only, this is not. So now, uh, in, in, or, or you can actually return by value or something if you want to. So, so save it. Now we're going to come back in here, and now that's actually possible. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? So as you see, already I have some kind of an array that works for like a regular array for me. The only problem is that it's not a smart one which means if I exceed the size, it just loops on itself, which is not good, right? It's a good idea to make it in a way so if you buy, pass the thing, it resizes it to the size that it's supposed to be. So it actually makes, uh, and, and also it doesn't have rule of three. I have to do, you're going to do the rule of three at home, by the way. I'm not going to do it, okay? So next time you're coming in, I'm going to ask somebody to come over here and actually do the rule of three for me, okay? So be ready for it. You're going to come over here and implement the rule of three for me, OK? Huh? No, I fooled my force. I'm, I'm putting you on, on spot. And I'm going to take attendance the next day. So it's not going to be only him and her over here. <laughs> Everybody has to come. No, I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to make it like 5,000 if you want to? So. To make, it, to make it safe. First is to make it safe. If I, I can do this now. And it won't crash. It keeps going on itself. Right? And I gave the user the chance to be smart and see what is the size. But if they're dumb enough to go 5,000, they make it 5 and go 5,000, let them do it. It won't crash, which is a very dangerous thing to do. Sometimes you want it to crash, because this is a bug that you will never be able to <laughs> find out. <laughs> you know, you got to say, what the heck happened? And it's just, you didn't go by the size, right? So I'm going forward. as we, So I'm going to fix what you just said. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say over here, I'm going to do this. Where is it? Where is it? So in here, I'm going to, let's, instead of that, instead of 5,000, I'm going to make it seven. <laughs> okay? So we, ju we just want to make sure that that automatic, because now, first of all, I am accessing the one that is not constant. So I can, in this overload, modify the object, right? So all I need to do over there is, Right? New size. Correct? That's all I need to do. So now, in here, instead of having just this when it's not constant, I'm going to say if index is greater than or equal to m size, it means I'm out of boundary, right? Resize to index. Uh, plus one, I think, right? Correct? Is it plus one? Do I need to get it plus one? So let's see. If index is five and size is five, I am off one. 
it has to be six for inverses. Yeah, so plus one. Yeah. Okay? There you go. Problem fixed. And I don't even need to do M size over here anymore. If they go further, it's going to make it bigger. All I need to do is to solve how to do that. Right? And this is how you program. You don't write the code over here. Okay? You write the function you wish you had. Okay? You write your, the function you wish you had. You look at it. You say, it looks good to me. Then you go fix the function. Okay? Don't bring all the problems in one function. Do it. This is modular programming, not mod. This is, this is real modular programming f from ground up. Okay? Not to first write something that is a whole mother of this is huge. I cannot deal with this thing and then break it into pieces. Start it right from the beginning. Now, in here, I can actually do the resize. So the resize, and I'm going to write the resize that, this, that works both ways. I can shrink and I can make it bigger. In future, maybe I want to shrink a, an array. I have an array of 5,000. I only want to truncate it and make it 10. I want to be able to do that. So let's do it. So what I will do in here, I'm going to say, that's my new size. So I'm going to say uh, double pointer uh, temp is set to double new size, right? Thank you. New double something something. So I created that. Are we good with this? Now, now that I have this, I'm going to say for size t set to zero, set to zero, size t i. Let me put it out over here. And i less than m size, right? And i less than new size, because I don't know which one is bigger, right? I have to small at, stop at the small one. So that's the copying thing. I'm saying start from, start from i go up to size or new size, whichever is smaller, up to that point. i plus plus. Now I'm going to copy everything into temp. So temp is equal to temp i, of course is set to m data i. So all the data is copied, and after that is done, I delete the data, m data, and I'm going to set m data to be equal to temp. Obviously, I'm going to say over here something like to enforce the same thing that I had in the other one, right? So if uh, new size is, has a value, fine. If it's zero, make it one. So uh, I cannot shrink it to zero. That doesn't make sense, because that was the thing we had over there, right? So now my resizing is OK. Is the resizing OK, actually? Let me walk through it. So I create uh, whatever size is. Then I'll go into your eye, and I'll do all the good stuff. So I'll go up to size on that one. Oh, what's the bug in here? I have a bug. Hmm? No, no, or it's, it's going it's to crash. Minus 1% for. <laughs> no, no, or English and computer science. <laughs> so it has, to, it has to be. So let's say you want to you shorten it. So it's 10, and you want to make it 5. If you want to make it smaller, then you have to only copy the first 5 and throw away truncated, right? That's why we have and over there. So what's wrong with this? Yeah, we didn't set the new size. Now 1% for that. OK. All right, so uh, so where do we set it? Uh, I have to set it over here. So uh, m size will be set to new size. Are we OK? And I don't like to return void. You know that, right? So in here, I'm going to make it double array reference, and I'm going to return this in here. Why? Because I can. It's not generating any new thing. I can just do some cascading if I need to. 
Are we good? Questions? Suggestions? Now I have something that I actually work on. So, so if I put over here seven, so as you see initially, it's five. So in here, I'm going to say C out printing, printing, printing. Okay. Uh, D dot size elements. Right? So when I run this code now, are we good? I need to see out an L over here. Oh, we could have. I have an idea. <clears throat> you know, I have an idea for you. <laughs> Make this a helper function so when you print the array on standard out on O stream, it prints it as a comma separated value. You never have that one for an array, right? That's a cool thing to do. So if you just print an array out, if you don't say, so you can actually overload the thingy in a right. So, all right. And when you're getting it, uh, anyway. So now, now when, and in here now, I can say PRN array. And I can pass the D to it. As you see, I am printing my array. I am not passing any size. So that all those things that I had with the regular array where you had to pass the size, always remember how many things you had, you don't have anymore. Okay? So now when I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, it compiles. All right. So it comes over here. It creates the array, comes over here. Sets everything to null. Now it says uh, size is five and creates the new data, and everything over here will be automatically null, obviously, because I set it to null. And then it comes out. Now it starts from zero. So that's, that's the first one that gets created. So that's zero, one, two, three, that's four, and now I come over here, as you see, because index is 5 and size is 5, it comes to resize. And my resize is giving me an error, but it's compiling. That's interesting. Anyway, so why is it doing that? The heck is this? Yeah, anyways, so, so now new size is 6, so it actually creates 6 of them and copies the 6 into 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It goes over there, deletes the data, sets it to new one, size becomes six, comes out, and returns that value, and it's set. And I do it for the next one, and now I go to print array. When I come to print array, now it's going to print seven elements. So I created five, but it readjusted itself to seven. So now my, my array is actually pretty smart. If well, it doesn't matter what is the size. I can, I can decide what the initial, initial size was, but after that, it takes care of it itself. Right? So now I have an array that not only is not going to crash, I can guess what is the size of information that I have, and I put it over there. Most likely, it's not going to resize, but if it goes higher, who cares? It's going to adjust itself. Beautiful thing, right? For now, because I want it to run properly and everything's going to be good, um, uh, what I'm going to do is this. You are to remove this at home, OK? Array. Uh, const double array array reference is delete right and uh, double array reference uh, operator equal 
same thing over here. Okay? Rule of three applied, okay? To make sure it's not going to crash. Go home and actually implement them. That's going to be in your final, final test, okay? Go and do it. Remember that. Uh, I didn't just give up any question. It's obvious. Like, we didn't do it in the first half. I have to ask you the question, right? So you know it's going to be there. Letting you know that's one of the questions to do that. And not only that with the... <laughs> All right, so that's my double array, right? That's my double array. I want to convert this to a template so it can be for any array. I can create an array of doubles, array of whatever I have. It's, it's gonna, so I want it to work that way. So what do I need to do? First of all, <clears throat> I create a module for a template. So I'm going to say add new item, and I'm going to call that a header file. And I'm just going to make it array.h. That's it. OK? Fix that pragma once thingy for me, please, and put the safeguards and everything so it fits. Then the next thing you do, everything from, the, or from your implementation comes in a header file. Why? Because templates require everything to be in the header file. We don't have a module that has a header file and a non-header file thingy. So that's that. Now close, close, and let's start. Are we okay now at this point? Right? So that's the thing I want to create and make it, a, make it a template. I want it to be a template for any type, correct? So what do I do? At the top over here, I'm going to say template, type name, type. I'm making a template, right? Right? You okay? Are you okay? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so what you need to do, yes. Class templates. Yeah. Templates. There's no, there's no specialization. Class templates are like that. Special we don't have every class template is a specialization. In functions, you have a signature. You don't have to specialize it because it identifies from the signature of a function. A class doesn't have signature. So everything is specialization. When everything is specialization, it's not special anymore. <laughs> Becomes just some function templates. Okay? And as you notice, a template applies only to the scope in front of it. So you have to repeat that. And it doesn't have to be type. I can write over here. It doesn't matter. But then in, the, in this case, I have to change everything to hoo hoo. You don't want to do that, right? What I'm saying is that that template must be applied to every single thing you have. So in here, I'm going to say type. So that's that one. Copy, I'm going to come down. Copy, I'm going to come down. Every single scope requires a template. Right? So that's step number one. You go through it, you apply the template to everything. Then you change all the types of focus to type, right? In here, I'm creating a double array, right? Now it becomes a type array, correct? Do I need to change the size T? No, because any array has a size. It has nothing to do with my template. I have 10 cards, 10 integers, 10 laptops, 10, 10 everything bagels, right? So that's what I'm going to have. So, so that's that one. Then I come over here. This doesn't need anything. This doesn't need anything. This doesn't need anything. Oh, there you go. It's returning a double. That's the type. It's returning a double. That's the type. Please look. Do I have anything else in here that I need? No, I think we're good, right? Well, if, if not, we'll find out. So. Now, in here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention how, what are the steps. So first, change the, the types of focus, whatever, uh, to the type of the template. Or what do I call that? The types that are needed? Uh, the needed. Mm -hmm. The focus types? 
I don't know, change the general, seriously, what do I call those bubbles? Change the focus types. Ah, we'll fix it later on. Uh, change the uh, focus type of the class to the type of the template. Somebody reward it later on, please, and let, let me know, okay? So that, that's number one. Number two, okay? Because classes don't carry signatures, at any place you are using the name of the class, you have to apply the signature to it so template knows which type with two exceptions. So you see over here it says double array. Why am I doing double array, by the way? Let me first change all the double arrays to arrays. So control H double array is array. Replace all. Okay. So, so now you see this? I am changing the class array, right? Any place you see an array, you, change, you add the signature to it because it needs to know reference of what is being returned. If I'm returning the reference of an array, it has to be an array of type, correct? And because it doesn't have a signature, I have to apply to it. So I have to say this is array of type, correct? But two exceptions. So apply the type to the name of the class with two exceptions. The name of the class right after template. Template, make, make it three. <laughs> Constructor names, you don't touch them because they are not functions. Remember? And for the destructor. You do not apply it to those. So now let's take a look. This is a constructor, I don't care. Constructor, I don't care. This is a constructor, no. I have to do it this way. This is a constructor, no. You add it. This is a destructor, you don't touch it. Anything else? No. So the class definition is now converted. Does that make sense? What did I do? Oh. What did I do? Any other mistake? Number two. Line four. Oh. Okay. That's why we have pull request. Fix it and do a pull request and I merge it. <laughs> okay, so, so that's that. Now we do the exact same thing to every single thing you have in here. Okay? First, let's go with the types. This is a double, that's a type. This is a double, that's a type. I don't have anything. Now classes. This is a class name? Yes. This is a class name? Yes, because it has to say which resize it belongs to. Right? There is no constructor name in here. Is it? No. Right? Right. Right? Right. Yeah. Now we're going to come to the next one. In here, it's double. That's changed. Type. This is a class name? Yes. This is a constructor name? Don't touch it. Okay, constructor names, destructor names, and the class after type are not touched. After that, you put everything. Size T array, yes, it has to be changed. I have nothing else in here. 45. Oh, yeah, thank you all. Thank you very much. And this one, fantastic. Now, in here, that's good. This is fine. This one is a double, so I have to change it to type. This one is the class name. I'll add it. Do I need anything else in here? No. This one is double. That's type. This one is the class name. That's fine. 
Done. OK, so now I have a template that works with anything. Obviously, I have to document it. I have to go through every single thing it has over here and see what is needed. For example, for example, for example, oh, and uh, yeah, and we forgot to actually set this one to null. OK, so for example, default constructor for the type, because you are creating an array of 50 of those things and you're defaulting them, right? It needs a default constructor. So the type that you have must have a default constructor. Otherwise, it, you cannot create an array out of it, right? When you are coming over here, assignment operator between the two types must work. Rule of three, right? Or if you don't say rule of three, do we have a copy constructor anywhere? Anyways, you have to go through all these things and see exactly what needs to be supported by the type, and you document it at the top of the template so everybody knows what your template needs to cover. And doing so, now you come to your, to your prg.cpp over here. Instead of double array, I'm going to just add array, right? In here, my print array needs to be a template now by itself. Because I want to print any type, right? So I'm going to come over here and change this to a template. So I'm going to say template. If you are using a template in a function, you have to make sure it works for anything, right? So now in here, I'm going to say type. Voila, done. So in here, I'm saying when I use the printer, I see what is the type and just use that one instead. OK, and then I'll come over here and I'm going to say I want an array of doubles. Done. The good thing is that now it could be an array of integer, array of anything. Are we good with this? Right? You don't need to create this. It's in standard template library. <laughs> I told you, every single thing that you think you need, I, we literally have in standard template library a template called array. It's all lowercase, though, I think. It's very inefficient. Nobody uses it. One of the rules is that whenever you want to use any type of collection, use a vector. Never use an array. Vector. Vector is essentially an array, a smart array, very efficient with memory usage and extremely fast. So it says, any time you want to use an array, use a vector instead. Again, this is 345. This is not 244. OK? So these are like, like, it's like when you include standard template library over there, then you can you do whatever you want. It's the, you know, but it's a good thing to implement them and see how they work. Anything you can imagine in our pay grade, in our richness of our blood at this moment, it's in STL. Okay, very rarely you need something that is not in STL. So that's that. And you run this, the outcome is exactly the same. I, I didn't do anything different in here. It's because it's using the exact same logic, right? And the good thing is that now I can actually do this. And use the exact same logic for it. It works the exact same way. Did I do anything? Oh, shoot. See, I, I designed an array, and I forgot how it's actually. Uh, and this one, I'm going to say I. So when you do this, then it works for both of them, well, with, with errors. But anyways, I have to see what was down there. Uh, and I, uh, we went up to 7, so this one is only, the rest are 0, because I made 10, and I went up to 7. OK? What was this thing it says? Possible loss of data. I don't know what, but I'll, I'll find out. I don't know why. Is, what was that? Conversion from size T where? Size T? Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's, that's normal, because I have size t and I have integer, and I'm, you know, 
But that's, that's not, no, we, can, we can cast that to an integer and we don't do it. Oh, by the way, and by the way, we actually, now we have templated cast, okay? That I'm gonna teach you the next day you're coming in. So you don't say integer anymore. You actually say static cast to an integer. So with, what is the difference between templated text uh, casting and regular casting? Regular casting, you write it and you wish the compiler does the same thing for you. With templated cast, it works exactly like the old cast, but it's, the difference is that if the cast is not what you intended, it's not gonna compile, it gives you a compiler error. So sometimes you wanna cast a double to an integer, you have to mention that I want that. If you wanna cast a double pointer to an integer pointer, then you're changing the whole construct. You're changing types from integer to a double. So everything's different now. You have to tell to the compiler, my intention was that. If not, then the compiler is gonna say, what the heck? You just casted something that you thought that you want to temporarily change the type, but it's not type. You're changing the foundation, or you wanna you wanna cast. Uh, you know you know we can always cast uh, a child to a parent, okay? If you're hundred percent sure that the parent is pointing to a child, you can actually cast the parent to a child in the other way using templated cast. You can force it, okay? Things like, so there are many different types of cast that we, four actually, that you specific, it's regular cast, but you tell what is your intention of this cast to the compiler. So if it's not, if the result of the cast is not what you intended, the compiler will let you know. Well, that's the next day we are coming. And that's class templates. Questions? Oh God, I'm late. The class starts very quickly, you know, I have to go very quickly. Any question? Question one, question two. Okay, so your, your, pardon me? What quiz? Oh, always quiz, like we, have, we are back in normal. Okay, we have quiz to the next, last day that you're coming in. Huh? Topic, I'll, I'll usually send the link to what the topics are and what you have, but yes, it's templates and whatever you see that I do over here, it's gonna be, it's possible that I ask you to write a short code this time too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, short code to see how you do it, okay? I don't know, I haven't designed it yet, I'll let you know. Okay, so, 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 pardon me? Yeah, I'll let you know. I can even give you the question, I don't care. Well, okay, I can give you the question uh, earlier, and then you do it for me in a, in a quiz. No, you're not bringing it, it's closed book. You're not bringing anything with you, okay? I'll tell you what the question is. I'm going to have a quiz on that. Uh, yeah. That's actually a good idea. I'll give you, a, I'll give you what the question is. You've got to come and do it. In, in, huh? No, it's going to be something that you can remember from your memory in 10 minutes. If you can't, seriously? Okay, anyways, have a beautiful day, everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.